Well, thank you, Linnea, for that nice introduction. And um, hi, everyone. It's good to see you all. I see some um, names that I know. And it's nice when you turn your cameras on and then I can see um, the face behind the name. So, yeah, my name is Glenis Nellis, just to add a little bit to um, Linnea's nice introduction. And I live in Michigan. I'm from England originally, but we live in Michigan. I'm married to a pastor and um, I've been involved really in children's ministry all my life. I was a teacher in England and then became a children's minister when we came to the United States 20 years ago. And now, yeah, I'm a mom. So I'm thrilled that you're here. And I'm going to share my screen. I have lots of visuals to share with you, which I hope will help you as you think about um, offering a, a story walk for your church. So let me share my screen. So if you haven't um, come across any of my books, these are um, just some of my titles. Uh, a lot that I use, I know, in churches. And so thank you so much if you are one that has used any of my books. And for the purposes of our time together, I'm going to be focusing on this book here, which is Towards the Morning of Easter. I'm going to talk through using that for a story walk, just because that's the one I have experience with. This is the book that we use at our church to present um, a story walk. Actually, it was two years ago during COVID. But I just want to say that, of course, you can use any book for a story walk. It doesn't have to be um, any of mine. If you're considering one for Easter time, it doesn't have to be towards the morning of Easter. But that's just the one I know um, about and I know how it works. So, all right. So let's talk about, um, well, let me just, if, you, if you're not familiar with this book, Towards the Morning of Easter, it just, um, I love to write in rhyme, and this one, I just took the familiar rhythm and rhyme of the Planet Seymour Classic, um, and Towards the Morning of Easter, it tells the resurrection story through the eyes of Mary Magdalene. So this book actually begins after Jesus has died, it begins outside the empty tomb. And so for children ministers who um, are a little concerned about sharing too much of the violence of the cross, um, this is, it's a good book because children know Jesus is dead, but we kind of avoid any of the graphic details. Okay, so now let's talk about what is a story walk in case you haven't ever come across it before. So really, a story walk just invites participants to walk through the pages of an illustrated children's book, um, which has been taken apart and displayed page by page along a walking route in your community. Now, story walks typically are done outdoors, which I think is just um, a fabulous way to invite your community because your church doesn't have to be open, right? Um, if you're doing one outdoors, it's always available to people who are walking by. Um, and this little paragraph here, it talks about a children's book that has been taken apart. And so I will talk about the different ways that you can um, and last the pages and laminate them. But the cheapest way really is to buy that book and take the pages apart and use those for your story walk. I don't recommend that just because to me it's like um, destroying a book in a way, you know what I mean? But um, but that is the cheapest way. You could, you'd have to buy two copies of the book, obviously, because you know, You've, you've got to show the page that's on the reverse side, but you can take the pages apart and literally put them on some sort of stand, um, or laminate them. Um, but anyway, that's what a story walk is. So now, um, what are the benefits of a story walk? There are so many friends. Um, I'm just gonna go through them for you. First of all, 
especially if they're outdoors, a story walk promotes physical health, doesn't it? Because you're walking about, right? Um, a story walk obviously develops literary skills because you're encouraging that reading and that love of reading. A story walk strengthens family relationships because what you're going to witness is families, um, typically outdoors or indoors is fine too, but just bonding together and reading the pages of the book together and talking about what's happening and looking at the pictures. And um, it's just a great way to bring the family together. A story walk promotes intergenerational ties because what we found in our church is that this was an Easter event that the whole church could get involved in and um, take ownership of and feel good about providing it. So we had retirees who got all the costumes out because we dressed up as some of the characters from the books. So, you know, we had people who got the costumes out or who made costumes. We had we had a wonderful gentleman who made our wooden storyboards that you'll see in a minute. Uh, we had another wonderful guy who came with his truck and pounded the stakes in that would hold those boards. Um, and then at each station on the day of the event, there were older people giving out eggs. We had kids could collect eggs at each station. Um, they were greeters, they were pointing the way. We had a lady in a wheelchair who sat with a blanket and welcomed kids and pointed the way to the next stop. So, um, and then of course we had, you know, babies in strollers and, and every age in between. So it's a really great intergenerational event that your church feels good about um, offering. Number five, if you do a story walk outdoors, especially outdoors, it's going to strengthen your relationship with your community because your community, if it's outdoors, can come and walk through your story walk anytime they want to. And this is what we found. Lots of people from the community were, you know, who drove by, they're like, story walk, what's that? I'm going to check it out. So it's a great way to... Um, and that segues into the last one. This is a creative way to spread the good news, friends. Um, and people who might not necessarily want to come to your church, they'll, their, their interest is perked with the story walk. And so they came to check it all out. And we did have some new people come to our Easter worship because, um, of course, at the last station, we gave them invitations and told them a little bit about us and what our goals were. So there's a ton of benefits that maybe you can think of more. Let's talk about what makes a good book for a story walk, because if you're just joining now, and I see some people who have just joined, um, for the purposes of our time together, I'm going to describe how our church used towards the morning of Easter for an Easter story walk. But you, of course, are free to choose any book you want to. Uh, we'll talk about copyright in a minute. But these are my guidelines if you're choosing a book for a story walk. I think the ideal length is between eight and 16 spreads, um, just because you wouldn't want 40 spreads because People would be exhausted, you know what I mean? It's not a marathon, it's, it's a nice little walk. Um, anything less than eight might not be um, long enough. So I would say between eight to 16 spreads. And typically picture books, um, there's 32 pages, so that's 16 spreads. And in this story walk, we just actually used 15 of the pages. Um, you want to look for one that's got engaging illustrations because, you know, especially for non-readers, that's what they're looking at. They're looking at the, uh, the vibrancy of the pictures. So choose one that's got engaging illustrations and fun things for the kids to spot. And you don't want to have too much text on the page because, um, A, you, you just don't want the parent, if the parent is the one doing the reading. And it was so sweet for hours because kids would read, you know, what the lady I talked about in the wheelchair, she said, 
when kids came to her hours, you know, she would say, can you, would you like to read that for me? And they would, you know, so it was great. So you just don't want to be stood there forever reading tons of text, you know. So those are my guidelines. And it just so happens, friends, that <laughs> towards the morning of Easter, I think, um, meets uh, those criteria. Uh, I mean, when I wrote this book, I'd never even heard of Story Walk. So it was just a big blessing to be able to find that this book could be used in this way. So this is an example of, well, it's the first, it's where the story begins in this book. And so you see the empty tomb and this illustrator, Elena Selvanova, she really captured the um, the atmosphere, you know, of the empty tomb and the soldiers outside. And so, Linnea, can you see the bottom of the screen where the poem is or is my black bar um, obscuring the words? Um, I can see one, two, three, four lines. I'm not sure how many there are. This so this black bar. If I if I is that better if I move it up there? I don't know. <laughs> well, anyway, anyway, it's fine. I'm just going to read to you how the book begins. That's all. Um, it begins in this way. So you'll recognize the clemency more. It was the morning of Easter before the sun rose. Two guards on a hillside were just trying to doze. You see, Jesus had died only three days before. A huge stone had been placed to seal the cave door. Um, so that's how the book begins. And so I, I do think it's it's um, a good one for an Easter story walk. And incidentally, Towards the Evening of Christmas is a similar book that we also used for a Christmas outdoor story walk. So, all right, what are your first steps, friends? Um, you always, whatever book you use, you do have to, if you're not going to take the pages apart, like I talked about earlier, if you are going to photocopy and display pages of a book, you do have to get permission. So you must seek that from either the publisher or the author many times can point you in the right direction. For this book, if you're using this one, um, HarperCollins Christian have granted permission for you to go ahead and photocopy and enlarge the images from this book. So I know that's always a big worry, so you're fine. Um, but the other thing I want to tell you, if you don't know already, is that HarperCollins Christian also made available what you're looking at, which is my favorite um, image in the book, because look at their eyes, you know. Um, these are high res images. So these are much better quality than what you will get if you photocopy and enlarge. So these are available for any church. They do cost $25, but I think it's, I think that's a bargain, honestly, because you get the cover and the entire interior and the text and the pictures, and then you're free to go ahead and enlarge them as you wish. Um, so I think that's a deal. <laughs> And so in, if you can't see that, now friends, let me tell you, let me just, I don't know why I can't move this bar, but whatever. If you want these high res images for this book, this is exactly what you have to do. And don't worry about scrabbling to write this down because at the end of, this is um, a slideshow on Canva. And at the end of the presentation, I have a little QR code with all my slides, you just, you know, click it and you'll have access to all these slides so you don't have to memorize or write it down. But you're just going to email that contact at HarperCollins and they will send you a form. And what you have to do is request PDFs and just add the details at the bottom that you'll see on the screen that you want JPEG or TIFF images with text of the cover and all the interior spreads. Okay, but as I said, don't worry about memorizing that because the QR codes will be um, shown at the end. Okay, all right. I want to show you friends what I did, what we did at our church and how this worked. Um, so what I did was I got the high res images and I added station numbers and interactive questions to each spread. 
and I did that on Canva and it's really easy to do and you'll see a, um, an example on the next slide. And then we printed and laminated ours at Staples. This size is 18 by 24, but you'll see lots of other sizes used by different churches. This worked pretty well for us. You'll see the wooden board that a, a nice guy at church made for us. We just stapled them on. And our story walk, we did it through our parking lot. It snaked around the parking lot and around the front of our church. We're lucky because we have public parking across the street. So we could clear our parking lot um, to make way for the story walk. And so you see, we put ours up the week before Easter and we left it up the week after Easter. So it was like a two week come and walk our story walk. And then we had the main event. I think it was Easter Saturday. So that's how, um, what ours looked like at the beginning. And hang on a minute, because it jumped. This is what it looked like on Canva when I added the numbers for each station and the interactive question, which is right here. I wonder what the guard is thinking. So it makes it fun for parents and kids to wonder what that, what is that guard thinking? You know, what's going on in there? And I do have a list of the interactive questions. It's coming up in a minute. Okay, so here's another example of one of the spreads with the number on this was station number 12 and one of the uh, wondering questions. I like to use wondering questions because I think they really invite children into the story and help them to ponder what's happening rather than using closed um, questions. So now, friends, I'm going to show you a few pictures of um, how it looked like for us. This was our event outside our church. So you can see it was during COVID because the children were masked. But I love these pictures because you can see how the kids are, they, they were really into the story and they were pointing things out. And you'll see that they have little bags because as they entered, we gave them a bag and they collected uh, Easter eggs at each stop. And also it was fun. This is our choir director right here. And um, she dressed up as Mary. Her stop was number seven. And so we got like a little, you know, a little um, kids playhouse. And you, see, you can see the daffodil and the white cloth for the tomb. So, and I think that question said, I wonder if you would have been brave enough to go into the cave. Um, and then on the right, this is just, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with Flowering the Cross on Easter Sunday. Because we had this event on Easter Saturday, the day before, it worked so well at station number 14, I think, when with the resurrection. We invited kids and adults and everyone to take a daffodil and flower the cross. And then we were able to use it on Easter morning in the sanctuary. Um, so that was just a fun a fun part of it. So now what you're going to see is pictures of other churches. It was such a blessing for me to see how other people took the story walk idea, took this book and made it their own. So you can see these massive big banners here on, I'm not sure what sort of stands they are, but look, they've got balloons that have the numbered stations on. And I don't know if it looks as if they had two set up one on the grass and one in a in a little arena or something, but that was, and, and look, you can see this must be a big church because they've got eggs in um, laundry baskets, which is kind of cute. This one came to me from a church somewhere in the south. They have like an arena, like a big barn, a huge barn. So they put their pictures on big tall like stakes in an indoor arena. This one, look at this, isn't this creative? Um, this church took pallets and put the pages on pallets and did big separate numbers. Um, 
they didn't use the questions but you know that it's fine you just take it and you do with it what you want but i love it that there are kids dressed up as the as the guards outside the tomb and they have the white cloth and i think these are candles here so kids could have a little meditative time when uh, mary's praying right here and this was a little bag that the kids collected at the end a thank you bag and inside that i'm pretty sure that they put there is a free downloadable activity pack that i wrote that accompanies the book you can just download it and again i have a qr code for that at the end here's some i don't know how big those boards are but they're massive and isn't it great look at the people all dressed up and i love the way they must have, this church must have put out like dress up clothes and sandals you know for kids to dress up and um just interactive objects from the pictures so okay i'm, I'm, I'm showing you this one because at staples do you see those little signs those are garage sale signs so you can that's an easy way i think to do it um because i think i believe that yeah they're already laminated so you can get your signs printed on garage sale signs at staples the only thing is for me they're a little low down you can see that lady kind of bending down to read the text it's great for little kids and you certainly want to have the pages at a child's eye level but for me they're a little low but um you just have to do what works for you. And friends, check this out. Let me move this. It, this is a drive-through story walk. Again, it was during COVID, but I'm, I was blown away. I'm like, oh my gosh. So the, these banners are really big. I think they're like three foot by two foot or something. And um, cars drove through the story walk and were given X. Um, isn't that wonderful? I just loved it. And then this church passed them on passed their banners on to another church. So that was great too, uh, sharing. Here's an example, friends, of an indoor setup. Again, we have the eggs and they are using pallets, um, big numbers on the stations. And these right here, these are the activity packs that this church printed out. Station number 14 is the last one. And so the kids could take um, a downloadable activity pack in that pack there's like colorings and activities and there's even a little easter pageant if you wanted to do that all right let's talk a little bit about some fun add-ons um i think i mentioned before that we had our story walk out for two weeks the main event was easter saturday but we put it out a week before and we left it out a week after because friends if you've invested in this because you know it takes work doesn't it and some money uh you might as well get your money's worth and leave it out for the community to walk through i know one church put those up at the beginning of lent and they had it up the entire 40 days and then the main event was at easter so um think about getting the most from it you can have people dressed up at each station like you saw you can let kids collect eggs at each stop and we gave our kids um, a goodie bag at the end with the downloadable activity pack and here's a little plug just in case you're looking but I'm not this is not a sales pitch but the book towards the morning of Easter is 50% off right now at Church Source and that's until February 14th so I think that's it's like nine it's less than ten dollars a book so uh, that's just a little tidbit for you again I have a QR code for that so no worries friends here are the interactive questions that I used again don't worry about writing them down um, you could because you can access these slides um, with the QR code at the end. But those are some of the wondering questions that we found um, were great to encourage interaction. All right. And then, friends, if you don't mind, I'm just going to whiz back. I hope, don't get dizzy, but I realized that I did not talk about, I must have missed one slide off. I'm so sorry, just give me a second. <laughs> 
because right at the beginning, oh yeah, this is what I wanted to talk about. See this thing at the bottom here? I didn't miss the slide, it's right here, but. So the Story Walk project, if you can see at the bottom, uh, this, it's got like one of those little copyright things, those little circles, I can't remember what you call them, but when we did the Easter one, we didn't realise that the Story Walk idea does belong to this lady. And so it would be really nice if churches kind of acknowledged her. So when we did our Christmas Story Walk, we put this little piece of information on the bottom of our first board um, just to acknowledge that this story walk project was created by Anne Ferguson. So um, I just think it's nice to acknowledge that she was the inventor, the creator of it. Okay. All right. Now, I'm sorry, I just don't know any other way to get back to where I was other than whisk through. But the pictures are cute, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm, at, I'm at the end now of my little talk and we can open up. Um, Lynne is going to look at the chat for any questions. That's where I was up to. Um, there we go, friends. I'm going to leave this here for a second. Here are your little QR codes. I just figured if you're on a laptop, you can get your phone out and you can see any of these that you want to access, the free downloadable activity pack, um, this Canva presentation with all the information I've just shared and that little 50% um, off the book till February 14th. And if you're on your phone right now and, and you can't, I mean, I don't think you can be on your phone and access a QR code, I don't know, but, um, don't worry if you can't. I'm easy to find friends. I'm the only Glennis Nellis in the whole world. I honestly am. So I'm, I'm super easy to find. <laughs> and my website is just www.glennisnellis.com. I hope um, you found that useful. I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to see uh, what questions I can answer, okay? Okay, um, if you'll just put your questions in the chat, we'll move on with that. <laughs> I'll give you a minute. And thank you, Linnea, for inviting me. Oh, I'm thrilled to have you here. And uh, so is everybody else. <laughs> Um, I had one question that I was thinking about. Um, it strikes me that this is a great opportunity uh, to interact with kids who have disabilities. Um, if you set it up right, if they're in a wheelchair, that's great. If you're talking about uh, kids with autism, to have a uh, space for them to be around. Um, kids with uh, ADD, ADHD, they can bop in and out of it. Um, yeah. Just struck me as a really great thing if you have kids in your congregation uh, who have. Uh, who are neurodiverse and need some space. Right, absolutely. I think that's a great point. And I know that that was one of the advantages we found to having ours outdoors because our church is um, an old church, you know, and it was built before the days of um, being cognizant of differently abled children or adults. And it's very, it, we don't have an elevator and it just wouldn't have worked well for us to do it indoors and so yeah we did and we didn't have a little child in a wheelchair and we, and we had um old ladies with walkers you know so yeah for all those things it's it's a very inclusive event mm -hmm. um let's see let's see let me get back here to the beginning of the questions um 
uh, were any of the photos showing the actual book pages laminated. I'm thinking of going that direction. Um, they all, they all were all the photographs that I shared. They were, I'm pretty sure they were all laminate. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit confused. At <laughs> okay, I think what they were asking is all the ones we saw. I think were the book pages blown up bigger. Right, right. They weren't the actual book pages. Right. Yes, that's correct. I. I mean, I just shared pictures, photographs that have been sent to me. So, yes, you can totally, like I said earlier, the cheapest way is to buy the book. Well, you'd have to buy two of them if you're going to take it apart um, and, yeah, and laminate it. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty good size, you know. Um, I mean, I don't know what this measures, but we did them 18 by 24, and I think... So yeah, it's a pretty. It's still a good size um, yeah. for people for people to read. I was was eighteen by twenty four, which I think might be double that size. But yes, you just do what what feels good, what feels right for you. Um, are the images twenty five dollars each or twenty five dollars total? No, it's the total. It's the whole thing. That's why I said I think it's pretty good deal because. I mean, it's a 32 page picture book. So when you think of it that way, it's less than a dollar per page, you know? Yeah, it's the whole thing. You get everything, the covers, the front and back, the whole interior. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and then you can also use those high res images like on your screens, you know, if you're doing, if, you, if you're using the book on Easter Sunday or for a children's time, or then you could, they can use them on your screen. <laughs> to get this down here. Come on. Um, I have a question about other books. Um, have people had trouble getting that you've heard of um getting permission to use any other books um, i suppose if you're just taking the book apart and using it you don't need permission no you don't because it's your book you own it you're not copying it so uh -huh. you can do what you want if you're just taking it apart but yeah the minute you start to copy it that's when you need copyright permission. Um, and I honestly don't know. I can only speak to my books. You know, I know that my wow. publisher are very open to um, people using it in this way. And mm -hmm. I can't think there would be problems. But again, I can't speak to other publishers and other books. Yeah. I I I'd be interested if anybody has other books that they're thinking about doing this with. Yeah, you could put, you could put it around it. Easter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could put it in the chat. Um, yeah. I, see a, I see a question here that says, how did you allocate how many eggs each child got at each station? Mm -hmm. um, that's a great question, Martha. We, because we were, we talked about that, you know, because you can't just have a big basket full and let, let have it. That was in part why we had um, people stationed at each spot was A, to greet, um, you know, and be a friendly face and C, they were responsible. They just took one egg and they gave it, they put it in the bags. That's, that's the way we figured it out so that a child didn't grab five because we didn't have enough, you know. So, and, and the kids pretty soon got used to that. They knew they were going to get one egg at each station. Yeah. I, think, I think also because for us it was during COVID um, and we were concerned, you know, about little hands everywhere. And so I think my volunteers wore gloves and we were just careful about one egg per, per one bag. Yeah. What did you put in the eggs? Uh, well, there was candy in some of the eggs, but um, 
we didn't want to put candy in all of them, you know. So some we had, I think we had stickers. Um, I think we had some uh, with little things, probably from Oriental trading, which I know is not great either, you know, a lot of plastic. But I'll tell you what, Linné, one church had a fabulous idea, and in there they were doing some sort of fundraiser, and what what did they? So in their eggs. It was like the kid, each kid got one egg at, at every stop, but then they opened their eggs before they left and they took out and it was like a dollar amount. Um, and they, so like they might open one and it, and it would say $1 and, or another might say $5. And they got to allocate, they were like little tickets and there were three different fundraisers and they got to pick which jar to put the little ticket in. And that would be the amount that the church donated to that um, cause in lieu of buying Easter eggs. And I thought that was brilliant, you know. I've seen that done too with just wooden eggs painted different colors. Uh huh. And you put the eggs in a jar <laughs> and then they, they allocated the money based on how many eggs were in the jar. And that way you got rid of all your plastic and all right. your paper. You didn't have to do any of it. Right, right. Um, um, Linnea, don't let me forget. I see someone's asking for the QR codes to be shown again. So I can definitely do that um, in, in a second. Yeah. This yeah. is also being recorded. So mm -hmm. if you lose that, um, you you can always go back to the recording mm -hmm. and and pick up the QR codes that way too. Mm -hmm. so. well, here, you, here you go. I'm just going to bring them up for a second, Linne, while we're chatting. Sure. Um, there are the there's the QR codes, friends. And if you if you're not sure how to do it, if you're on your laptop or your iPad, you just take your phone out and get your as if you're taking a picture of them, as if you're taking. Get your camera, open your camera and put it on the QR code and just wait a second and it should the website should pop right up on your phone. That's how that's how they work. So somebody had an idea of um, getting a puzzle and put a piece in each each egg by color. Yes. And um, they have each color, each piece put together into a puzzle. Yes, I love that idea. And we did that, Linné, at, um, at our Christmas story walk when we used Twas the Evening of Christmas. Because we had 14 stations on Oriental Trading, we found these 14 piece foam puzzles. And so they got a piece of the puzzle at each stop and then they had to put it together in the sanctuary at the end with Santa. <laughs> so yeah, I, I love it. Isn't it wonderful how when we get together, we're, we, we can share ideas and all our creativity as a team, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, one of my favorite Easter books is Miss Fanny's Hat. Do you know oh, that book? I don't, but it sounds fun. It's, um, it's about an elderly, elderly woman who is asked to donate her hat to the auction to fix up the church. And she ends up donating her Easter hat. And oh. um, she, she remembers all of the different hats that she has and how important they are and everything. And um, it, it's a really great book. I did it during... Um, during stewardship, and and I asked everybody to wear a hat, and uh, it was really fun. Uh, the kids didn't wear hats; the adults did, <laughs> so they got into it. But I was thinking that would be a really fun one, one to do, um, yeah. especially as an outdoor one because it's not. Well, how do I want to say that? It's not quite as churchy. It's it's more accessible to people outside the the church world. So, 
Yeah. I'm in New Hampshire, so one percent of our population goes to church any given Sunday. So I have to be very aware of that. Um, most people don't know Bible stories, so. Right, right. Yeah. Um, I see in the in the chat somebody saying, "Glennis, have you heard of anyone providing activities at each station, hands-on activities?" So um, maybe other people can jump in on on the chat if you've had experience of that. But I know um, for the Christmas one that we did, it was really fun because we had kids roasted marshmallows with the shepherds at, at the shepherd station you know um so that was kind of fun to do um i'm trying to think if we did any more but i think anything you can do to interact with the kids um is great and so you would have seen that some stations provided dress up so the kids could like dress up as some of the characters um one station when mary prays at the end um, they had, I saw they had little candles, maybe like for a little meditation time or just to hold a candle, you know, those battery ones. Um, I think if you brainstorm with your teens, because we're all creative, we can look at the pictures and come up with um, different activities to offer. Um. <laughs> yeah, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> it's okay. Um, yeah, does anybody else have any favorite books that you think would work with this kind of thing? I mean, I have tons of books. <laughs> if you look behind me, <laughs> half of those are children's Bible story books of some kind or another. And... Um, um, I, I can think of a ton of them that would be really fun. Uh, what about you, Glennis? Do you have books other than your own that you would think would be fun? Uh, I'd have to think about it. Um, the first time I ever came across a story walk was uh, one of my friends on, it was during COVID, and so a library was offering this story walk. I mean, I see them everywhere now, but I think they were doing um, the snowy walk, you know, and that, right? Is it called mm -hmm. the snowy walk? Um, yeah, so, and that was lovely. So I saw pictures of this kid going through the, the snowy walk and, and they were in the snow, which was um, perfect. But that book, the snowy walk is what, inspired me to look at mine and think gosh I wonder if that would work with any of my books and um those two in particular twas Easter and twas Christmas they they work really well just because the illustrations are so pretty you know and they're easy to read and does anybody know God bless the gargoyles no oh it's such a great book um and, and it has very few words. It's in rhyme. And um, <laughs> it's it would be a great story walk to do like in October. Um, not at Halloween, but before Halloween. And um, it, it, it talks about... Um, you know, God bless the ones who do everything wrong <laughs> is one of the lines. Yeah. Um, you know, so it has a, a great twist on, on those. Um, and it talks about it, how the angels come and care for the gargoyles um, mm -hmm. when everybody thinks they're bad. And they're not. <laughs> no, it sounds good. No, I haven't heard of that one. Yeah. So I, it's an, I, and my kids are older. So some of these mm -hmm. books are older books that I did when my kids were young. I mean, my youngest is 23 now. So uh, 
it, yeah. maybe. Um, yes, it was uh, Dave Pilkey. Um, oh, yeah. He's is so the cool. author. And yeah. it's just, it's a beautifully illustrated book. Mm. And that would be another great one. Yeah, so Judy um, says she was thinking about When God Made You by Matthew Paul Turner. Yeah, and yeah. yes, any of Matthew Paul Turner's books, because those illustrations are so vibrant and fun. And again, not a lot of text on the page. They'd be perfect. Yeah. Jill says The Garden, The Curtain and The Cross. Yeah. Um, yeah Tales yeah. That Tell the Truth series. I haven't heard of that. I'll have to check those out. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to have anybody who does this send us pictures and we can right. hear it again. Yeah, that yeah, would that be would be so great. much fun. Yeah, to hear how and, it goes. And Martha's mentioning Mary's Christmas story. I haven't heard that one, but I like the yeah. sound of that. If it's written from Mary's point of view, and then what's this one? Clock of the Christmas donkey. That sounds good. Yeah. 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 There are so many oh, okay. Christmas books. There's a few Easter books. Um, it's it's kind of fun to branch out. Mm -hmm. um, would any of your, the mole books work? I haven't seen them, so. Oh, I, yeah, absolutely. I think they would, yeah. Little Mole Finds Hope, I think, would be perfect around Easter time. Or Little Mole's Christmas Gift would be perfect at Christmas time. I mean, I'm slightly biased, you understand, but <laughs> but but yeah, there it's just a sweet little simple story and um, not much text on the page and really cute illustrations by Sally Garland. So yeah, Linnea, I don't I I didn't think about those, but absolutely they would. Uh -huh. um, and someone's saying you could do a pumpkin parable book and then they could carve or paint a pumpkin at the end. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. And and someone's asking, what was the name of the gargoyle book again? Yeah, they, um, somebody else put it in. All right. It's okay. God Bless the Gargoyles by, uh, it's, it's D-A-V, Pil yeah, Pil Lee. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, um, I think, you know, I, I think of all the books that have been written on creation and to do those maybe a couple of times during the summer might be really fun. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there are some absolutely. beautiful ones like that. Um, uh, we have several naturalists around here. It might be really fun to have them there and talk about what's <laughs> what critters live in your woods. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That might that might be a, a fun thing to do. You know, for a summer camp, a story walk at a summer camp would be a fun thing to do. Yeah, or a, or, or part of. A, the end of end or beginning of VBS, if mm -hmm. somebody does a VBS. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We we found um our Easter one was great and it was really successful. We had a great turnout. Our Christmas one was not as well attended, I think, because of the weather. You know, you just always run the risk um of the yeah. weather and, and it was <laughs> I'm in Michigan and it was not it was really cold that day, but so when you have the actors out, you just do those for a specific time. I think you, I saw like nine to 12 one day. When you have, you have it up for two weeks, but your activities. Right, right. The activities and the actors um, and, you know, giving eggs out or whatever, that just happened on the day of the main event. And so the main event for us was like two hours. I don't know if it was like nine till 11 or something like that. It was just a two hour event where people came and walked through. So people were dressed up for two hours or they were giving um, eggs out for two hours or whatever. Mm -hmm. 
but yes and apart from that the story walk was just open on its own and people just came and walked through the story they didn't have any um you know and Did nobody you... greeted them or anything they just it was obvious where yeah. to go how did you advertise it to the community? Well, we have a really good communications director at our church. And um, Facebook, you know, Facebook is fantastic. I mean, there's a lot of bad things about Facebook, but communication is um, a great way on Facebook. So mainly um, it got out through Facebook. But, you know, we invited area churches and um, we got it in the local schools and and then word of mouth you know so how did you get it in the schools well um so the christian schools nearby oh okay yeah i know because it's tricky you have to be careful with the public schools mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. yeah um somebody asked uh, during the walk, did it get crowded around any of the storyboards? Do you know, we, we were lucky. We were a little worried in case that happened. But on the whole, no. I mean, sometimes there was a little bit of a jam, you know, or a queue. People were waiting, but they were pretty good um, about that. Again, that's why it's a good time to do it in the spring, because hopefully your weather cooperates. Um, so... And I think if you're worried about that, um, it's good to spread them out a bit more. You know, some of the pictures we saw, you it was obvious that there wasn't that much space from station to station. But we tried to, it's hard to say how far between. Like, I don't know, like, like if you can imagine two houses, <laughs> that's the only way I could really describe it. So less than a block. But a good, like, maybe two houses between one and another so that they weren't all on top of each other. Yeah. Um, wait a minute here. Uh, another, uh, somebody said uh, that I heard about a church taking and recording the readings and setting up a QR code on each of the, the stations so that people could listen to it. Yeah, that's a great idea. I love that idea. Yeah, and that's brilliant. Yeah. 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 It, then it, yeah. I, 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 I'm not technologically savvy but that would be great if somebody could come up with that <laughs> yeah i love that idea um you know like when you go to the art gallery and you get a little piece that tells you what's going on at each painting mm -hmm. yeah yeah so i like jen's idea this would be great in the sanctuary on a saturday afternoon invite people in to see the space with no strings attached yeah that's a great idea jen uh-huh yeah yeah i love that yeah, may do a trial run with your church members and then move it out into the community. Yeah, that's yeah. a great idea too, it's, um, to have a trial run, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's so many ideas here. <laughs> and, and so many options. Um, other questions, comments, ideas? You guys are great. I know one church had um, those and um, they've got, what's it called? Where are all the trees? An arboretum. Mm -hmm. Isn't that and that isn't that a lovely setting for a story walk under the trees? Yeah, they had they had a whole path where people already walked through the arboretum, and so they did their story walk there. Yeah. All right. Let let me check. Let me look at Lindsay's question. Sorry, I was late. I may have already missed this part of the conversation. Did you talk about best practices for getting the pages physically printed? Yeah. Um, 
if I take the permission page from the website to the printer, is that enough to convince them I'm not breaking copyright? It should be, yes. Because if you, um, Lindsay, if you look at the free downloadable activity pack, the st all the story walk suggestions are at the back of that pack and right at the bottom it says in, in fine print, permission is given um, by HarperCollins Christian to photocopy the pages of this book. So that should suffice for your printer. Um, but best practices, well, personally, we got ours printed at Staples who never asked us anything. <laughs> they, they printed it and laminated them. Um, some people got those printed straight onto garage sale signs at Staples too. I know Canva has a print and laminating service that I think is pretty reasonable. I didn't, I haven't used them, but I just saw when I was, when I was putting my questions to each spread and my numbers, you know, I saw that it said, do you want this printed? So Canva might be um, a good option for you to explore too. We talked about laminating is the best way to protect. If it's going to be outdoors, you really need to laminate to protect it against the elements. Um, but if, if, if you're just doing it indoor, I think paper would be fine. I mean, cardboard is going to probably be better quality, but paper would suffice. Yeah, let me know if you have any more questions. I know my church, which is fairly small, doesn't have a lot of space, either indoors or outdoors. And um, so as I think about this, we would really have to be creative on where we would put things. We have a small garden. We've got a small patch lawn. <laughs> on one side of a driveway and we've got a small patch lawn on the other side of the driveway. And so yeah. it would be um, something that would be challenging. On the other hand, we sit right on a main street. Yeah. So that means that by using that front lawn, mm -hmm. it would be eye-catching. So um, ups and downs. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Lene, for our Christmas one, we use both indoors and outdoors. Um, mm. So the children finished up. It was outdoors, but the, the last two stations were in the sanctuary because then the children were invited to come in and meet Santa um, and make up their little puzzles. They'd collected a puzzle piece at each station, so they were invited indoors for hot cocoa and make your puzzle and meet Santa. And then what we did after the event, we just moved the two stations outdoors okay. so, that the, so that the community could then walk through it. Yeah. yeah. But, but, but that might be an option for you is use all your outdoor spots and then take it inside for, mm -hmm. for your main event, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. And I saw somebody said that they'd use Canva for printing and it would be, um, it was quick turnaround and it was good quality and better price than staples. That's good to know, Judy, because I wondered about Canva printing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Um, Madison's saying you might be able to partner with your local park. That's a great yeah, idea, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Look, You've I got a little idea. park not far from us. Um, uh, yeah. Would there be any problem if we wanted to translate this into another language? It, or is your book already available in other languages? Um, they have a predominantly Hispanic population. Well, I'm afraid it's not in Hispanic. I wish it was, Karen. Um, would there be any problem if they translated it? Do you know, that is such a great question. I have no idea, but I, I'd be happy to ask my publisher because I'd be interested to know the answer to that too. Um, mm -hmm. Because it, then in that case, Karen, what you would need, I don't, I think you'd be fine because what you'd need to do, Karen, is 
If you wanted those high res images, you just ask for um, the image without text. You know, they, they have that option on the form when you email HarperCollins Christian, they ask, do you want images or images with text? So you could just select images and then you could just put your own text on that page. You know what I mean? So I feel like it will be fine, but let me let me check. Are we? I I feel like we're friends on Facebook. Are we friends, Karen? <laughs> I will find you, <laughs> and I'll, uh, I'll report back. Here's another question: Would we be able to do a page a day on Facebook, and how would the copyright work for that? Terry, are we friends on Facebook? I am going to find out. And, and that's a great question. Let me think. Because I've seen loads of people sharing the book. Um, but that was typically during COVID when they relaxed the copyright, you know. <laughs> Terry says we are friends on Facebook. So great. Okay, so I I have a big asterisk by your name, and I'm going to I find that out from my publisher. So well, what you're saying is you want to share a page from the book each day on Facebook, right? And how would the copyright work? Let me find out for you. You can unmute yourself if we're not asking the questions correctly. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, us. I was just wondering if I just was thinking um, it would be kind of a neat um digital way for us to do a story walk. We've got a lot of outstate members and friends that follow us on Facebook with our live services. So I was, as I was sitting here thinking, would there be a way to do like, you know, a, a page a day and just put the text and, you know, like a thought, the thought question or whatever. So that was my yeah. wondering behind that and how that would work with copyright. Terry, that is a great question, and I've never been asked it before, but I love that idea because, you, yeah, you'd be able to reach more people. So, Are you going to be with David in Chicago in February for the ACC? I, I, am, I am. I'm in David's group, so maybe I'll run into you. You are? I, yeah, I met you. Yep, I we had dinner in October. Uh, right. Oh, my gosh. This is so fun. Hi, Terry. <laughs> Um, okay, Karen, I'll find out. Karen Harbin, um, you're the one who asked about translating it into Spanish. Um, right. Could could you put your your email in the chat so that Glennis can pick that up? I think Glennis yeah. can find me. Can you hear me, okay. Glennis? Yeah, I can okay. hear you. I think you can find me on Facebook because we're friends on your author page and your personal page. Okay. Yeah, I, I thought we were because I recognize your name. I, I recognize lots of your names, which is so nice. But yeah, Karen, I've got it written down and I'm going to I'm going to find out for you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure you got right, an right. your question. Yeah, I appreciate that. But so, Karen, just to check, would that be your plan then to get the high res images, and then I don't know if if we if we did it, we'd want it in English as well because we have oh. enough English speakers. Right. So we'd probably just add it on the bottom, like you did the the questions. Right, and I think you'd be fine. But I'm I'm going to check for okay. you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And, and, and then it might be a good, you know, plug to say, people are wanting this book translated into Hispanic. <laughs> <laughs> Any other languages out there that you need the book? <laughs> <laughs> you never know. <laughs> well, the Easter book is in Italian and it's Romanian and... Wow. Uh, yeah. And Lithuanian. It's... Yeah, I don't That's know why. That's really but, interesting. But no, but Hispanic. Spanish. Huh. Yeah. yeah, I'm surprised it's not in Spanish because it's such a um, high population in the United States of Hispanics. I know, me too. Yeah. 
but it's, oh. it's not not something I can control, you know. Yeah. <laughs> not control, oh. maybe suggest. Suggest, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, any other questions? Oh, somebody else said they also have a, uh, <clears throat> would like a it Spanish as well. Yeah. 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 Great. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. Okay. Any other questions, comments, ideas? <laughs> well, if there are none, I just want to thank um, Linné for having me and um, thanks so much everyone for being here today and thanks for your kind words in the chat. I saw all of them um, and I really appreciate it. Um, and so if you do do a story walk with my book or any book, send me pictures because and, and Linné too, because we'd love to know. And it's just fun being able to sh share creative ideas together. Always. Always. It's part of the reason I love doing this, because there's always so many great ideas and great people that I get to meet. Mm -hmm. So from all over. And, and Linné, when this will be uploaded to YouTube then, and when will it be available? Um, I don't do that part. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, so the, the coordinator for the New England Episcopal Churches does that. Okay. And I know he's just getting back from a big conference. So, um, probably next week sometime. Okay. Um, I will send you a link. And then what I usually do is I put the link up on all the Facebook pages that I right. did it for. Okay. Because for some reason, I can't figure out how to talk to people after the event on, on Eventbrite. <laughs> right. I, I need a tutorial from somebody. Um, <laughs> So um, that's the best way I've come up with it so far. So yeah, okay. um, if you're looking for it, you can look for it on the Forma page of the Hope for CE page, uh, wherever you saw it, I'm, I'm not sure. I have 15 pages that I posted to, so. Yeah, and I, I know I shared it widely too, so. Yes. Yeah. So that was great. So there it is. It's up here. So, okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Linnea. Thanks, everyone. It's nice to meet you. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>